dawn's early light was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and a little worried too like coach what are we doing and then finally he goes coach Foz you see that Dust Brothers I said yes sir he goes that's my freaking house 20 years ago and that's where he had grown up and he had talked about going up on I-5 and they were building I-5 and now it's a big freeway but back then I guess it was a two-lane road and he was playing on the heavy equipment as a young child on I-5 and pretend that he was driving a tractor every day and he probably was pretending like there were tanks because he liked to play war games and he talked about how he rolled his sister down a hill and I don't know the whole story but that can't be all good but they're so close today and he talked about his brother and how much it was for him to, that his brother to be proud of him and at that point I had never met his brother but it kind of goes back to and you're going to see some evidence as, it, as we go forward in the day that the most important thing to him through his entire life had nothing to do with the game of football it had to do with family he found out that every player has insecurities and every young man is insecure and every young man is going through this thing called life and is a little scared on how to act like a man and be a man and through those moments through communication through relationship because of a bonfire or a crazy idea going against the current we uncovered something that day about young men those young men fortified a bond in the union to last forever and won the first state championship for Nice High School. Again, not because of X's and O's, but because of the man that they had played for. I think that in closing and trying to sum up what was most important for Coach Howard, I think that you should get a Coach Howard life lesson and you guys could be athletes for one day and understand what's most important to him. And it is really this one sentence tied together. It's love, honor, and respect. You know, he coached at Mannard High School, at Bishop Kenny High School, at Apalachicola, at Alabama, in small towns in Alabama, and OIT, and at Bend High School. And the one thing the man always did at every one of those programs is end every game with the team gathered together asking young men to, who they love, honor, and respect. And to be able to stand up like a man and honor another young man is not easy for a 17, 18, or 19-year-old kid. I remember one time we were out and we were meeting with another staff. And, and we were at a bar eating restaurants, talking ball, watching games on TV. And one of the coaches from the other staff goes, why do you do that stupid Pop Warner stuff where you gather the team up by the stadium and you don't go in the locker room and talk? And uh, I go, we do love, honor, respect. He goes, well, why don't you take them in the locker room? In my mind, I go, that's why you can never beat us. <laughs> because we do those corny things that people, are think, that, that people don't think about. It's unique bond that the love, honor, and respect is the key to life. Love is what gives you power. Love is what gives you a courage to accomplish something. A 17-year-old kid is scared to say I love you to another guy. A 17-year-old kid is scared to say I love you to his mom and his dad. Doesn't understand the power of the word. It is the most important thing that goes with your faith. It is the blind, unconditional trust that you can put in someone next to you to be successful. He relayed that. To young men 17 years old as a grown man at 36 years old on the staff i didn't tell my own kids i loved them enough on coach howard's staff i started saying it every day i started saying every time i saw a young man I go hey i love you dude we go to recruit football players here in southern oregon i think they freak out the first time they meet this staff because we just say hey we want you to play in southern oregon and we love you and they go, i don't tell my mom about these guys are nuts right? it is who he is it is an embodiment of how to be successful as a man not as an athlete, not as a person, not as a human being, but as a man, because that's what we recruited. Young men that are going to become great fathers, great husbands. They're going to contribute in society. They're going to be successful because they understood that word. And they're not afraid to say it. They're not afraid to live it. They're not afraid to be it. There's a true benchmark to Coach Howard's career. There's a true benchmark to the man he was. Because I promise you this, from Apalachicola to Mandarin High School, to Southern Oregon University, to Nice High School, to Columbia High School, to Bend, Oregon, okay? One thing every young man on one of those programs would say to another young man, anytime things got tough, hey, I got your back and I love you. The very definition of family, outlined by P.J. Fleck at that same convention, family stands for, forget about me, I love you. It is the embodiment of Craig Howard. It is what made him who he is. It is what has made me who I am. It's made what every one of you sitting in the stands today think who is. It's what made thousands of players and athletes across the country grow to be successful. 
He is truly a man among men. You know, there are great coaches. There's Nick Saban's and there's Dabo Sweeney's and they play for national championships. And there's Bill Belichick's in this world that just won Super Bowl. And I promise you that Craig Howard's name is every bit as big as those names in coaching. Yes. Because I promise you, his lineage, what he has passed on from player to player, coach to coach, athlete to athlete, support personnel, anybody that's encompassed this football program or him in their life, I, is successful because of that man. His lineage is ginormous. And I use crazy words like that because that's what he would have wanted me to do. <laughs> we truly are honored to have had the opportunity to play for that kind of man. We have truly been honored to make the big time where we're at. Those Howardisms will live on forever. The craziest thing that he ever did is how I'm going to close my portion of the eulogy. And I think it's important. Might be corny, but I don't care because I think it's what he wants me to do. But anytime he saw something that was important in his life that made an impact on our football program, he gave him an attaboy. And there's a couple thousand people here today and there's 10,000 people across the world that need to give Craig Howard an attaboy. Right. We'll close a little different. So he's just going to repeat after me because he's up there watching today. I know he's laughing his butt off right now. So we're going to give Coach Howard one last attaboy. So everybody, hey, Coach Howard. Hey, Coach Howard. Go, Coach Howard. Go, Coach Howard. Attaboy. attaboy. We love you. Thank you very much. Someone we all love, and it's just an honor to introduce to you now, uh, Tim Tebow. So me and my dad drove to Nice High School and we sat down and in five minutes I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, this is the coach that I want to play for. And it only took a couple minutes of y'all drawing up Bengals X heads and Tornado, but it was more than just the X's and O's. It was more than just the fundamentals of the game. It was the love for life that Coach Howard brought every single game, every single day. And Coach Howard changed my life in more ways than he could possibly imagine. He was someone that let me see that you could be different, that you could dream for something, that you could be bold, that you could be courageous. And watching him every day that first spring when I was 15 years old at Nice High School and watching how he wasn't afraid to have the whole student body chant Mo or onside kick it every time, every time, which I loved. He wasn't afraid to be different. When he believed in something, he would go all out for it. And it was amazing as a 15-year-old boy to be able to watch him, but more importantly, to be able to see what he really stood for. You know, I'm blessed to be able to speak to kids all over the country, and I still get to share what Coach Howard shared with me, that it's about character, strength, and honor. It's about doing, what, doing what's right, doing your best, treating other people the way you want to be treated. It wasn't a slogan, it was a lifestyle. There is a big difference. Coach Howard lived it every single day. It wasn't something he did to have a great team. It was something he did to have great men. Because it was always more important to train up young men in the way they should go so they're ready to take on the obstacles of life versus the obstacles of another team. You see, we were blessed to win a lot of games, but I think more importantly, he was blessed to teach a lot of young men how to take on the battles of life. And he definitely worked us to take on a lot of battles. I remember one year we were getting ready for, for our training camp and he said, we we're in the basketball gym and he said, all right, five offense captains on this side, five defense captains on this side, you know where I'm going with this. Coach Howard walked to the center of the court and he had a basketball. He said, I don't care what you have to do, but whichever one of you gets this basketball and puts it in the other hoop, you win. So I remember all five of us on offense get lined up, ready to go. On defense, they get lined up, ready to go. He bounces the ball. We take off sprinting. It goes way in the air, like 15 feet. I run, and I just leap as high as I can to grab the ball in midair. And Charlie Kirschman, who's right there. Yeah, you don't duck your head now, Charlie. He comes full speed and takes out my legs and flips, so I land on my head. Still hold on the ball, and offense is pretty much fighting the defense, and it's going back and forth, and Coach Howard's blowing the whistle and finally stops. And he was like, well, that didn't work, but I'll find another drill that will. 
But that's what Coach Howard was about. He wasn't afraid to do something different. He wasn't afraid to dare to be great. And a lot of people are so afraid of being different, so afraid of having the courage and the boldness to stand out, and that wasn't Coach Howard. He would have us all gather up with all the fans around us, and he would have us talk about who we loved, how we respected them, who we needed to give honor to in that game. And let me tell you, it wasn't just for the best players on the team, it was for everybody. Because on our team, there were no best players, worst players. It was just family. It was all of us, all in, every single day, no matter what. I remember at the end of my sophomore year, we were playing Pedro Menendez. It was the ninth game of the season, and it was the last play of the first quarter, and I was rolling out left, and I threw the ball, and it was a terrible throw. And a defense line came and clipped me and broke my leg, and I threw an interception on the play. And I get up, and I'm trying to hobble to the sidelines, and we just went down 17-0, and Coach Howard comes over to me. And he said, what's wrong? I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to tell him I broke my leg or anything. He said, you all right? I said, yeah, coach, I think I'm fine. He said, Timmy, look at me. You need to suck it up. This is what legends are made of. <laughs> right or wrong? <laughs> Maybe a couple other words. And we were down 17-0, then got down 24-0, came back, rallied, tied the game at 24-24 with, I think, like 18 seconds to go. And we didn't do that because we wanted to come back and beat Pedro Menendez. It wasn't for the love of football. It was because I wanted to honor a father figure, someone who I respected, someone who loved, who challenged me. That first game, things must have gone too well in this game either because he uh, was talking about how they had to, <clears throat> to uh, work hard, prepare for the next ball game. He says, you know, there are millions of Chinese that don't even know you had a game today. <laughs> to try to figure out what that had to do with football. <laughs> How was I? You know, I watched it and all that stuff, but it, from Clama Falls, and, and uh, but he said, hey, it was something special. But he says a really neat thing was the, the banquet before the championship game. Craig Howard's speech was, he said, uh, just unbelievable. He said, I've seen a lot of people speak, but he got up from both teams. Instead of talking about his team and his program and, and Southern Oregon University, he talked about what an honor it was to be at the national championship and how proud every kid there and every family member should be that they reached that level. And I guess at the end of the speech, uh, they gave him a standing ovation, both teams, and it was real special. I called the coach at Marion, by the way, and he also mentioned uh, the next year, he says, uh, Valerie and Craig are walking down the beach, and uh, he was walking with his son down the beach, and they kind of met there and talked a little bit, and he said within a couple minutes, he was, uh, Craig was recruiting his son. <laughs> talking to him about Iceland. So 